Hey, how's it going? Oh, oh down, kid. We ain't dating. Oh, yeah. We're in for a good time. All right, you guys can see the release date of this video. It's basically become an April Fool's tradition on my channel at this point that I review a tangentially related piece of Sopranos media. That way, if people don't like it, I can just write it off as a joke. <laughs> this guy ever stop breaking balls. Today, we're going to be looking at quite possibly one of the weirdest things Nickelodeon has ever done. Besides all the other weird stuff, of course. Nicky Deuce is a made-for-television movie and is basically The Sopranos for kids. It's based on a children's book actually written by Steve Sharippa. Now everyone in the Sopranos community knows Steve, not only for starring as Bobby Bacala on the show, but also as the co-host of the Talking Sopranos podcast. Well, it turns out he's actually an author as well. Who knew he was so creative? To the victor belongs the spoils. Why don't you get the fuck out of here before I shove your quotations book up your fat fucking ass? Nicky Deuce tells the story of Nicholas Borelli II, a boring teenager living in the suburbs. Though his family is Italian, they're like the Cusimanos, Americanized and white as hell. Now he's Italian, but he's a Menegan. It's what my old man would have called the Wonder Bread Wop, you know, he eats his Sunday gravy out of a jar. When his parents are sent on an unexpected business trip, they reluctantly send Nicholas to stay with his grandmother in Brooklyn, whom he has never met. They warn him that that side of the family is crazy and tell him to especially stay away from his troublemaking uncle, Frank. When Nicholas arrives in Brooklyn, he's immediately a fish out of water in the city. However, he meets Donna, a local girl who helps him get acclimated to the neighborhood. He also meets his grandmother, Tootie, played by actress Rita Moreno. She's had a long and incredible career in Hollywood, but if you're like me, you'll recognize her from her role as Sister Pete in Oz. In contrast to his father's warnings, Tootie is a kind and loving grandmother, cooking delicious Italian food that Nicholas has never eaten before. His uncle Frank, too, though rough around the edges, looks out for Nicholas and shows him around the neighborhood. Frank is played, of course, by Steve himself. We're then introduced to Frank's friends, whom he describes as his partners in crime. You'll of course recognize the great Tony Sirico as Charlie Cement, and the fact that this vaguely mafia-esque crew is multiracial. How progressive. Oh no, it's a multiracial TV gang, including white guys. Well, well, what do we got here? Let's beat him up, but not because of his color, because that doesn't matter to us. After this, Nicholas begins to suspect that his uncle is involved with the mafia. One day, he answers his uncle's phone and talks with Pauly, the boss of the neighborhood, played by Vincent Curatola. He gives Nicky a job to go and make a collection for him. Taking the advice of his friend that he should man up and be like the guys on TV, Nicholas decides to do it. Nicholas and his new associate, Tommy, then go to collect from this guy, Bobby Eggs. Eggs is played by James Gandolfini in what was actually one of his last roles he played before his untimely death. Through a series of slapstick accidents, Nicholas ends up beating Eggs up, who gives him the money he owes. When he asks for Nicholas's name, he decides to create a new, cooler identity for himself. They call me Nicky. Nicky Deuce. With his new name and his now tough reputation on the streets, Nicky feels at home in Brooklyn. He even takes Donna on a date to the local Italian festival. However, at the fair, he overhears cops discussing his uncle's activities and thinks that he's being set up to be arrested. However, before he can warn him, he's taken to go see Pauly. Pauly then orders him to go pick something up for him at their warehouse. When they get there, they see this weird German scientist, played by Michael Imperioli, hypnotizing the horse to make it run faster. Nikki realizes that Pauly is fixing the races to make money, and, believing that his uncle is being set up on this, steals the horse and hides it. In retaliation for this, Polly has Tootie kidnapped. Nicky agrees to exchange the horse for his grandmother, but at the exchange, his father shows up, having come back from his trip because he was worried about him. The gangsters then find the horse, and with no need for them anymore, tie the Borelli family and friends up. 
Frank and Tootie confront Nicholas's father for abandoning them, and he fires back that Frank's troublemaking is what got them into this situation. However, Nikki tells them that they need to work together. They end up escaping after taking out all the guards. Meanwhile, the race has ended, and Polly's horse is won. He goes to collect his massive payout, but is arrested when he does. It's revealed that Frank is actually an undercover police officer, and not actually a criminal. Nick's father apologizes for thinking the worst, and the Borelli family is reunited. Nikki gets the girl, learns about being cool, and roll credits. Alright, you guys already know why I'm reviewing this. For being a made-for-television Nickelodeon movie, the film has an incredible cast of Sopranos veterans. This is entirely due to it being Steve's project, as he was able to reach out to his fellow Sopranos actors to get them to do the parts. Even Nicky himself is played by Noah Monk, most famous for playing Gibby on iCarly. By the way, I did a quick search to see what Noah has been up to since then, and uh, yeah, it's not what I expected at all. Pretty interesting though. The movie also has what I'm sure are a lot of intentional callbacks to the show. Charlie says Nicky has been watching too many movies, just like they said about Christopher. You've been watching too many movies, kid. Too many fucking movies, that's his problem. Much of the plot also revolves around a horse, just like Pioma. Miss Stevie's Biscuit. He's gonna win. Stevie's Biscuit? Yeah, people like to give their horses weird names. Also, Frank forgot his phone in his car when Nikki was trying to call and warn him, just like Bobby did in the Blue Comet. Luckily, it worked out better than that situation. However, aside from the Sopranos casting, how is the movie itself? Well, it's a made-for-television Nickelodeon movie. It's as corny as you'd expect it to be. It's not horrible by any means. In fact, I was pretty entertained throughout the film. I was even pleasantly surprised at how much crime they were allowed to show. Someone even whips out a gun at one point. When I was growing up, kids shows were never allowed to show something like that. Don't move a muscle or we'll shoot you with our invisible guns. Now, it might be a little pedantic to throw criticisms at a movie like this, but I did have one big problem with the film. Tommy, the sidekick. He pretty much only exists for comic relief, in the most childish, corny ways possible. Even in 2013, we were well past this era of writing characters. Also, Nikki has another friend character, I can't even recall his name but he only serves as an exposition opportunity for Nikki. It's kind of weird that they have two underdeveloped sidekick characters in the movie. They probably should have combined the characters into one and given him actual development. Instead of, you know, whatever this is. Buddy, tell me. Snap out of it, come on, tell me, hey! <laughs> but that's pretty much it for the video. Is the movie actually Sopranos for kids? I guess. Or you can just show your kids the actual Sopranos. After all, I watched Oz as a kid. And I mean, when has HBO content ever scarred a young, impressionable kid? In fact, he'd been terrified of the very notion of prison since, as a young boy, he accidentally watched HBO's Oz, mistaking it for the classic Judy Garland musical. Alright, who wants a kiss on the mouth? Obscracing Media, Daz J. Kit, Sam Cedarland, Celery Man, Jenna Marie Johnson, Brad Smith Studios, Uncle Mike, Shane Boyce, Matt Joyce, and Countess Von Zarevich.